So we've had several customer um, requests on how to take out your grill, assemble the whole grill, and put it all back together again. So today I'm at Brothers Truck to show you how to do that. There's quite a few bolts that are holding on the grill, so let me kind of show you where they're all at. You've got two at the top right here. You'll have two at the bottom down here. In the middle, bolted to the radiator core support, you'll have one. And then you'll have three at the top that you'll have to take off. The two right here, I just loosen up. I don't have to take this bracket off all of the way. And of course, you're going to have the same thing on the other side. Now, because the truck's been assembled for a long time, the front fenders, they're all squeezed together. And I kind of like to get a little bit of movement in those and bring them back some. So there's two bolts that are holding onto this bracket right here that's bolting into the fender. And then you also have one here and one right here at the top that are holding it in right here basically. So I'll loosen those up. I'm not going to take them out. I'm just going to loosen those up. I'm going to loosen up all my other bolts too. I'm not going to take them out just yet. And the reason being is that the bolts that are holding on to most of these, they're cage nuts. They're welded in nuts. And I don't want to strip those. If I use a power tool on this or something like that, it might ruin that. So I like to use hand tools. I can feel when the bolt's getting to be too much stress on it. I can screw it back in, let any dirt the rust that's on there fall out and then screw it out the rest of the way. If I've got a power tool on there, it just might strip it on out. So I'm going to loosen all of them first. I'm going to see if I've got any problem bolts or nuts going on because I don't want to have 90% of these off and then just be fiddling one with up here and it's the only bolt holding it all on. So I've got everything set and ready to come off. Let's see what this looks like underneath. This brace right here, you're going to need to save that, clean that up, and bolt it back onto your uh, new grill. Here it's easier to see where the bolt holes are for the grill at the top and down here at the bottom. And obviously taking your bumper off is going to make this a lot easier. Maybe you can do it without doing that, but I think it's just going to be too much trouble. Here you can see where the bracket bolted to the bottom in the middle right down here. So again, loosen them all up, find any problem guys you got, take care of those, then get the rest of them out. When you're doing it, you're going to take your bottom bolts out first and then your top bolts. If you take all your top bolts out first and then you're struggling with something on the bottom, this whole thing could fall on you. But if you take your bottom ones off, it's just going to hang there. Then you can take your top ones off. Everything's going to come off nice and easy and controlled. So from here, you're going to want to clean that up as best you can. I'm a little short on time today, so I'm not going to be doing that. I'm going to get right to the grill. Let's see how that goes back together. So I'm going to take the old braces that are behind the grill off. Now, th these are available if you um, have yours damaged, so you don't have to sweat that much. But these are in good shape, and we're going to be able to reuse them. When you're ordering your grill, make sure that you check and see if your braces are good or not. You don't want to get this all apart and then find it and uh, have to wait for parts and things like that. So, like you always hear me say, line up your ducks and um, kill all those birds. This is just held in with some really small screws, so this comes off really nice and easy. On the back side here, you might want to take some pictures of these. Remember which goes right side, left side. Um, I'm a little dyslexic, I forget. And what I'm going to be doing to take these out, you'll notice that these are riveted in. Okay, This is uh, your hood stop. This is going to have to come out also. So I'm going to unbolt this and then I'm going to drill out the rivets. Now when I'm drilling out the rivets, I don't want to make a big mess. I don't want to get too big of a drill bit or too small of a drill bit. I just want to be able to take off the head of the uh, rivet here. Okay, so I just got the head of that off. 
that's all I need, then I can go ahead and separate this and pop it out the rest of the way. If I get a drill bit that is uh, too small, it'll simply go through the middle. If it's a little bit oversized, I might punch through this all the way and drill the hole out larger and now my rivet's not going to work. So you're going to take a little bit of time and make sure that gets all done right. So give me a few minutes to drill all of these guys out. And then we'll get them cleaned up and start putting stuff back together again. Got everything unboxed nice and careful like. And I've got my plastic piece here that goes in the center. I'm going to set this right on top. And I'll be lining up my holes here with my holes here. You see that little square guy right there? Now that square guy is for these square prongs right here to fit into. And you might think that this just sits in there and then this goes on top and screws on, but that's not the way it goes. You'll notice that this has a shank or a bit of an edge right here at the top. Okay, and that is so it can fit in here like this. And then once you have it in, you still got a little bit of mobility. Um, you can go ahead and then put it through the square. Then you'll put on the screw. The screw will flare out the end and then you'll be in there permanently. Now the um, square holes right here, they're very, very specific. They're real tight. And the plastic right here sometimes will just be slightly oversized and stuff. It is a little bit tough to get them into the holes. You're going to have to be patient and work with it. It's more than likely not just going to sit here and then just snap right in. So I don't want to press hard on it because then I'll take my edge of this uh, aluminum here and I'll push it in. And I don't want that to happen. So here's how I like to do these. I need support underneath this aluminum. If I don't have it there, then it's more than likely going to bend. If I take this and just try to shove it in there, it's more than likely going to bend. I need to have that support behind there. So I'm just going to simply take this nut, I'll put it behind my aluminum, I'll put my plastic piece through, and then I'll simply take the pliers and crush it in. Then I can take my bolt off. I don't need it anymore. I can put my screw in, that will flare out these prongs on the end, and then it's going to be held in there. So it's going to work like this. That's going to go right there like that. I'm going to get it as firm as I can. I'll get my support on the bottom, underneath the aluminum. Now I'm going to go ahead and put that down. It's nice and firm. I put in my screw. Go ahead and screw it down. Now I can see my ends are flared and that I'm holding on really nice and tight. I know I'm good to go. I'm going to take care of everybody on the bottom first and then I'll go ahead and take care of everybody on the top. All right, now the top's going to be a little bit tougher for you because this is a bit longer here and these ridges on the edge right here, they're a little bit taller. So I just simply took the nut and I taped it onto the bottom of my pliers here so I didn't have to balance everything at the same time. And now I can go ahead and put this in a little bit easier here. I'll still use a uh, spacer at the top sometimes too. And see, I can't really get to it from that side, so I have to get to it from this side. I'll make sure that the center of the plastic is lining up with the hole on my nut. I'm just going to get it started a little bit. And then I'll use this as a spacer on the top. And then I can get it in nice and neat. I heard it kind of pop in there. That's always a good sign. Last little nut here. And then we are all set with this. Done. Now these can be quite commonly damaged, so you really want to make sure that it's all looking nice and straight and everything's looking proper. It's all cleaned up and ready to go. This one's looking pretty good here, so I think we're set. So you make sure you get your right side and your left side in the correct place. If you forget, just go ahead and simply take the bracket and try to install it in the truck and make sure that it's right. So this is the way this installs. And what I'm going to be doing is riveting this in. Now. 
Um, a lot of times what people will do is just rivet these all in and be done with it. But what I like to do is I'll just get the rivet like halfway done. They'll still be loose. And the reason for that is if I was to take this piece right here and it was off a little bit and my fenders are off a little bit, if I had this locked into place in the grill when I tried to install it here, it might make it more difficult. Or it might uh, cause a problem if this was uh, over to the side too much. Now I'm bolting it in. Now it might be twisting or torquing on my grill. So we'll go ahead and get it um, riveted in loosely. Then we'll put the grill in. Then we'll go ahead and bolt this bracket onto the fender. Then we can finish off our rivets and we don't have to worry about any distortion. So when you're doing your rivet, these guys can um, get a little squirrely on you and when the rivet um how let me show you just how this works real quick so what's going to happen is you're just pulling on this and you can see that this is flaring out right here i don't know how that shows up on camera or not too well and so what happens is is that when that goes and flares out that's what's going to make the rivet go now that right there when that pops off if you're doing your rivet on your grill and stuff and it pops, it'll generally jerk a lot and it might hit your grill. So always keep your hand really close and wait for that break and make sure that it doesn't go back and hit your grill. Now you might have trouble lining up some of the holes. You just get yourself a little uh, Phillips head screwdriver and then it'll help you line up the holes. When you're putting in the rivets, you need to make sure that the grill and the brace doesn't have any distance between it. You got to make sure that they're really contacted close together before you put that rivet in there and squeeze it down. So I'll put this emblem on next. Now you're going to notice about this is that it is fat on the bottom and skinny on the top. So you're going to want to install it right like that. Uh, so you want to notice that these right here has J nut on here or slip nuts. And that is so that the screws can go on here. And then you got this one down here on the bottom. Now those a lot of times they'll be broken. You're going to need to get new ones if that is the case. We got lucky on ours and they're still in really good shape. So I'm just going to reuse those. When I put these in, I am not um, tightening them down just yet. I'll get the grill all in there first and then I'll tighten everything up at the end. All right, now this is primer, so I don't have to worry about the paint, but you might want it on yours. So make sure that you got some tape wherever you're going to be making contact all the way down to the bottom here. Once I've got my paint protected, I'm going to take my fenders and we're just going to spread them out a little bit and make it a little bit easier for the grill to go in. When we're getting the grill in, he'll get his side started and up in there good. Got to make sure that this piece right here is up on top. Okay, you looking good down there? You in there? Yep. You up over that little kitchen on there? Yes, sir. Okay. Now I can get my side started. Okay. Back a little bit. All right, looking good. All right, so I'm going to get a bolt in the top right here so I don't have to worry about the grill falling anywhere. And then I can work on the rest of my bolts. So I'm going to get one right here and another right here where my inside bracket is. Now I'll go ahead and I'll get the bolt started in my side here and then I'll get my bottom in. So I want to make sure that my gap right here is nice and even before I bolt up my braces. So I'll just use something like this and just make sure it's nice and even and then I can tighten my bolts top and bottom. I've got my nice gaps going on both sides. I'll need to double check my gap right here. So I have not tightened these bolts here. I can move this forward and back a little bit when I lower the hood and double check. But now, before I lower my hood, I'm going to have to take off the rest of my rivet ends here. So again, when this pops, it can bounce and hit your grill. So make sure you're going something like this and expecting it to bounce so you're holding on to the rivet gun at its base here making sure she doesn't go anywhere. Okay so now what we did in the front right here is to make sure that we had the proper gap going all the way down is we've tightened up our fenders put them 
back into the original position, squish them back together. The grill needed to come forward some, so these two bolts were still loose right here. I loosened up this bolt. We moved it forward a little bit and then tightened everybody up. Now I'm going to take my hood bumpers right here and install these. When I install these, generally what I'm going to do is uh, go down pretty far, shut the hood, kind of feel how far down it goes and see how much further I have to come back up. You'll have to do this two or three times and don't forget to um, bolt down this little nut right here. That's going to lock it to where it won't screw or unscrew all by itself. All right, because you can see it's really not that tough. Um, it's just a bunch of pieces you're going to put together and bolt in. With my helpful handy hints, it shouldn't really take you that long. This took me about two and a half, maybe three hours. Had a little bit of help. You might want some too. Uh, but you can really tell that this just dramatically changes the truck. If you want to dramatically change your truck, make sure you check us out on Facebook and Instagram and subscribe to the YouTube channel. I'm getting tired of asking. You better do it, damn it.